doctrine develops over time. For example, um, the phrase Holy Trinity would never have been on the lips of St. Peter. It's, it's a phrase that comes about afterwards. The, the idea of the Holy Trinity would have been in a less precise fashion than it is in, in the minds of today's Catholics. Here's why. Peter believed, I believe Peter believed that Jesus is God and that the Holy Spirit is God and the Father is God. However, the phraseology that we developed in interaction with those who opposed us to say that there's the divine essence and there's the three personae and that one's, and the, each of those persona is in full possession of the of the divine essence and there's circumcision which is that they all are in each other and that, that the father is exactly the same as a son except for fatherhood and sonship and the spirit is the same as the others except for a spiritness if i can put it that way all these kinds of things which I'm, we need not go into them right now but the point is these are the these are the developed forms the developed uh, expressions of trinitarian theology now you wouldn't have those on the lips of saint peter because the controversies had not yet happened which have led to developing those those thoughts so that's when i said he wouldn't and his followers wouldn't have the same um, things in their minds as we catholics have today They'd have had all the Catholic teachings in a kind of kernel, in seed form. Some of it would be very developed. For example, yeah, Jesus is God, the Spirit is God, very developed. They, they'd have that. They'd have the Mass, because they'd have the Eucharist. Because it's very early, that the teaching that, um, that the, the, um, we receive Jesus under the form of bread and wine, but it's really Jesus' body and blood. John chapter 6 and the, the Last Supper discourses, and they're all saying this. And um, St. Paul in 1, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is there as well. And um, in the, the early church fathers. So there are various things. Confession, um, John chapter 20. I think it's John chapter 20. Where Jesus breathes on them, says, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whosoever sins you forgive are forgiven. Whosoever sins you retain, they're retained. And um, baptism as regenerative is all through the, the early fathers and it's there in acts of the apostles and in the second in the first letter of saint peter chapter 3 verse 21 so many many catholic teachings all the core teachings will be there in saint peter's teaching at rome but all the developed stuff that wouldn't all be there yeah is it even necessary for salvation okay at the time of peter no but when you get to when you get say you get beyond that to say the fourth century. No, because the apostles that's the end of the teachings of, um, of Jesus. Okay, here's why I'll here's why I'll suggest get beyond that. Right. Say you're now in the fifth century AD. You're a Christian who's born then. You've heard of Arius, the heretic priest. Yes. Well, from our point of view, a heretic. For others, he might be a good guy. So Arius um, is teaching that Jesus is like God. He's not of the same substance as God the Father, but he's of a similar substance. Now, St. Peter never even had to think about this. Neither did any of the apostles. Substance was not an issue for them. It's an it's a, it's a, um, Aristotelian term. It's a Greek philosophical term. So when you're in the fifth century though, you've got this substance, this idea of substance. You've got to decide whether you believe Jesus is of the same substance as the Father, or if he's different from the Father in substance, or similar in substance. You see, St. Peter didn't have to think about it because he couldn't think about it. You now have the problem of deciding on a question which didn't even exist in his day. If you say, the, if you give the wrong answer, you're in, you're in the wrong religion. If you give the right answer, you're in the right religion. Go on. Basically, if it's not relevant for salvation, then just get rid of the guy. I, okay. Well. okay, and that's a fair point. You see, if it's not relevant for salvation, the yeah. problem is, for Peter it was easy. There was, no, there was no way in his mind he'd consider whether it's relevant because the question had not arisen. Yeah. But when the question's arisen and there's two choices, we have to decide not only which is the right choice, but we have to decide whether it's relevant for salvation or not. Like you said, if it's not relevant, it doesn't matter. You're absolutely right. Yeah, but there's an easy way to know if it's relevant. Okay. To answer that question, you'd have to go to heaven. 
as he's no man has seen God, that's the end of the discussion. So we chuck the guy out. All right. Now we that's all right. Now that's your answer, and it may be the right answer. Yeah. My problem is, though it's a it's a wise answer, I don't know whether it's the right one, and so I'm still stuck. No, but I'm, I'm trying. I'm going for carrying on uh, peacefully. Yes. And so, so to me, that's the priority, not to try and discuss something where we can't work it out. That, that's like a diversion to me. Okay. Which is why I would no. just chuck the guy out. Listen, you could be right. Yeah. I'll, I'll say that. You could be right. And here we are, me and you, two fellas, discuss quite a bit, a few things. Neither of us can actually... We can have our opinions. Um, the only thing I say is, I need to get out of this kind of circle you and me are in, where it's my mind thinking about it as best I can and your mind thinking about it as best you can we need the Lord Jesus to have given to have given us an instrument by which we can know and to me that instrument exists is the church which he established you can see that in the New Testament writings that church does put itself forward as the means of knowing what is true and what is not and that's where I say I listen to that which tells me what is appropriate for what is necessary for salvation what is not that's how i get out of this circle i think i'm in if i'm just looking into, into my own mind and into another person's mind but you have to remember they did have a similar like how you say in the problem where it wasn't decided by like a sudden revelation from above uh, it was actually james who had to make the the declaration of what they would do for the, the gentiles. yes in the in the um, the council of jerusalem yes yeah, so already we already know that that, that kind of thing. But, the, but notice what James did. He made a decision which, like I say, is just uh, the most peaceful resolution to whatever you want. So you like, cut it off so that there's no more like, uh, like needless discussion. Yes. And, he's, and uh, the solution he gave wasn't a hard one. It was an easy one for them to follow. Yes. So they would, you wouldn't really have seen any of the others possibly not being happy what he decided. You know, I think that that we're in a special position when we have the apostles living amongst us. They could do, they could do things. That, actually, it's the work of the Holy Spirit, wasn't it? That council. And he operated directly through them because of who they were. We, in my humble opinion, are lacking that now. And we have to... Um, we still have, we have what we call ecumenical councils. We've had 21. The first is Nicaea in 325 AD. The most recent is the Second Vatican Council in between 1962 and 1965 AD. And it is the same operation. The bishops, successors of the apostles, gather together, contemplate certain questions, and give answers. We, we, we trust that when the church is in council, the Holy Spirit is working. So, we actually, in that Second Vatican Council, there were very, you know, um, questions were put, questions were dealt with in a way which I think was on a very reasonable basis. Yeah, that's right. Um, sometimes they're much more straight, dogmatic, and, you know, yay, yeah, your yay be yay, your no be no, and condemn certain things and accept certain other things. It just depends on the times, what's needed. But the Council of Jerusalem is a model for how we conduct business um, in council. And again, though, it does require that gathering together of the leaders.